Um, as a kind of a mid-season gift, which took a little while to arrive, uh, Frankie gave us all presents today. Okay. Incredible. Uh, well, not I say Frankie. Frankie summoned a demon called Memnock from a beyond another di- dimension to give us presents. My present was this, uh, which, which is just fantastic. Uh, the idea is that it's an avatar into which your soul can flee at the point of death. Oh! <laughs> So he's, got, he's got to spend eternity like that. <laughs> so he's trapped at the end of yeah. someone's garden. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what if like, this is in my house, right? And then I'm murdered by my wife and her lover. Do I just go into you him and spend the entire time eternity. sitting watching that? Yeah, cool. I got given a box in which to store the souls of my enemies. <laughs> there it is. It may look like an ordinary filing box. <laughs> and I... I got given a sword, which apparently belongs to a, uh, a rabid monkey, but I wasn't allowed to bring my sword out because apparently I'm not to be trusted. <laughs> and, 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 what did you guess? I got given 110 quid. <laughs> Just 110 quid. It's fabulous. But I got fuck all. So. <laughs> yeah. Myself and Gina, merely being guests, got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the brutal, the brutal logic of Memnock the High Elf. <laughs> What's that? You want to start the show? Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't put me back in the box. Don't put me back in the box. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Jeannie Ashray and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Ed Burns. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of Diabolical Mastermind Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> but what does N-O-T-R stand for? Is it what is taped over to do the video? Nuns on the run? <laughs> <laughs> is it new Osama <laughs> Top Shot range? <laughs> Is it like now on terrorists reunited? <laughs> it's actually an advert for his new porn DVD. It's Naughty Osama's Titty Ranch. <laughs> is, it, is it never order the Rehypnol? <laughs> Someone put Rehypnol in my drink. You order the Rehypnol. <laughs> is, uh, is it never on target? <laughs> <laughs> It's Osama's catchphrase among his friends, apparently, is nuts on the road. It's what he says to mean sort of OK. They go, shall we go out for pasta tonight? Nuts on the road, we will. <laughs> Does he do a motion to indicate, let's put these nuts on the road? <laughs> is he saying, now, our tie break around? <laughs> I'm liking the outfit myself. I reckon it's new Osama, Trini's recommendations. <laughs> Could it be, needs orgasm to relax? <laughs> Or maybe it's no orgasm, try rimming. <laughs> hey, give it a go, give it a go. Not on the road. <laughs> it's not never open that rucksack, is it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let me assume which was the correct answer, if you can it's see. new Osama tape release, is it? It's, uh, yes, it is, actually. Yes, wow. exactly Ooh. right. Well, <laughs> The answer I was looking for was new Osama tape release, the first communication from the Al-Qaeda frontman for almost three years. Experts believe the footage, in which he refers to recent events to be genuine, proving Bin Laden is still alive and successfully evading capture. By the way, how do you know his film recently? Because oh, he mentions Gordon Brown, doesn't he? He does mention Gordon Brown, yes. But he still mentions crazy. his Blair, though, which I thought was really funny, because he did actually say the world leaders like Bush and Blair and Gordon Brown. Uh, Blair must have gotten a hard on when he heard that. <laughs> still got got going, uh, yeah. I've resigned, but still the daddy. <laughs> I think he just coughs on the tape and then they dub over stuff to make it sound recent. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed the <coughs> burn ultimatum. <laughs> <laughs> I related to it quite a lot, actually. Yeah, he's he's, he's a lot smarter, isn't he, than he has in previous. I think maybe he's got a new girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the next video, there'll be, like, scatter cushions about <laughs> over the sofa. He'll be in leather, he'll be in leather trousers. Uh, and going, anyway, and going, anyway, nuts on the road, I've got to get out of here. <laughs> maybe that's it. It's just a, it's a whole new image shift. The next shot is just going to be a goth. Just great, just his hair brushed over. I know you all hate me, that's why I live in a cave. <laughs> he's changed his beard, but he's wearing the same outfit that he was wearing three years ago. He's a tramp. <laughs> I'd like to see him on the video using more like, uh, he could get like blue screen behind him, couldn't he? Do a bit of CGI. <laughs> what, him on a roller coaster? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> President Bush, I'm skiing. <laughs> <laughs> he's 
skiing down the mountain to you, President Bush. <laughs> no, I'm surfing. Oh. <laughs> See if you can find me here in the Wild West, Mr. Bush. <laughs> Oh, you did not know I was such good friends with Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hates Jews as well. Yeah. <laughs> it was put out by the... They've got a media arm, haven't they? In the, original, in the original video, there's a little thing at the top that says, produced by Al Saba Productions, which is the production arm <laughs> of Al-Qaeda. Is, is that the only programme they make? Do they make other ones? <laughs> the Semtex Factor. <laughs> Al Jazeebies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking at the pictures, though. He was just pissed off with people laughing at him, accusing him of looking like Gandalf. <laughs> Osama the Grey becomes Osama the Black. <laughs> there, he looks a bit like... You know those things you should have on your pencil? Good luck, trolls. You pop on the end of your pencil. <laughs> He's bobbly head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole thing that maybe he's shaved off his beard and this is a fake beard yeah. that he's wearing. I mean, if that's the case, he's the only guy that shaves in Afghanistan. How difficult can it be to find? I mean, they're selling, like, one packet of Gillette Fusion a year. <laughs> Just follow the cave that smells of Old Spice. <laughs> and we've got him. He also uses some fantastic language. Did you listen to the <coughs> tape? Nah. It kind of makes you realise. He said, uh, at one point, he said, uh, George Bush is like one who ploughs the sea. Yeah. He harvests nothing but failure. Which is fantastic when you contrast that with what George Bush says, which is essentially, mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's directly onto the internet, isn't he? That's, that's why they're getting disseminated as they are. And I just like the idea that he's doing his own Facebook page. <laughs> oh, I must update my status. I was filled with hatred of the West, but today I'm more hungover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a friend request from Abu Hamza. He's a messy typist. <laughs> <laughs> what did he blame big business for? Global warming. Mm -hmm. Global warming. He also said, he talked about, yeah, he felt for people under the burden of interest-related debts, insane taxes and real estate mortgages. He's basically moving Al-Qaeda into the centre because he's worried <laughs> that David Cameron has taken that ground. Yeah. <laughs> and he's rebranding the, the party. And at the end of that sentence, it should say, why not consolidate them into one huge loan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing. He's working for Ocean Finance. <laughs> he's talking about the environment as well. He's got environmental yeah, yeah. as well. You think that's a bit rich coming from him? Without air travel, we'd never have heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then he's trying to persuade Americans to embrace Islam. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work out, and I don't think you'd want the Americans to do it their way either. You'd get muck mosques. <laughs> By the way, back home, uh, how is Gordon Brown planning to deal with immigration? He's going to squish them, look. That's what he's going to yeah. do, everyone that comes in. <laughs> Squeeze them like an yeah. accordion. He's only, going to allow, he's only going to allow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight immigrants. Eight immigrants. <laughs> Only those people who can speak English are going to be allowed to come in skilled workers. Skilled workers. Skilled yeah. workers are going to have to show, apparently, that they have got GCSE standard English grade A to C, which is quite a high standard, given that half the people who already live in Britain aren't at that standard themselves. <laughs> and skilled workers coming into the country going, uh, oh, I say, uh, I believe in Hartford, Herefordshire and Hampshire. Uh, Harkins hardly ever happen. <laughs> and the locals will be going, do what, in it? Nim, nim, nim. <laughs> Is it the kids? Is that a bunch of talking mice from Narnia? All I can say to you is, your mum. That's a brilliant argument. That is. I've heard all the kids do it on the bus. That can stand for almost anything. Your mum. Your mum. In Scotland, instead of your mum, it's smell your mum. Taking it to another level there. Gordon Brown is saying that right now to the TUC. Look at your mums. All of your mums. Did anyone watch the TUC? He's obviously been told to smile a lot more, but it just looks weird. He looks like a baby with gas. He just smiles at the wrong moment. He's kind of, smile, Gordon. Gordon Brown talking to the TUC must be like the two most boring entities in the universe coming together. It's like Ken Barlow and Steve Davis getting together to discuss carpet samples. <laughs> It'll be so boring it will break time. <laughs> what was horrible, it just leads to bigotry, isn't it? It's that, it just makes someone go, like, if they're going to come over here, they need to learn English and they need to learn about our culture. And people who normally say that are the people you see in Benidorm going, Oi, Pedro, do you do chips? <laughs> but like, yeah. How much English do they really need? There's nothing that you can't ask someone to do with the words, mend this. Mm. Mend this. <laughs> <Good. laughs> make, make work again. Yeah. Make work. Oh, okay. There's nothing you can't get people to do without just pointing and nodding. Just... <laughs> <laughs>
Now, now, if the language that only applies to skilled, there are three levels. There's non-skilled, skilled, and highly skilled. Highly skilled, apparently, only needed English from last December. Highly skilled is doctors and lawyers. Who employs a lawyer who can't speak English? <laughs> Point at the jury. Point at the jury. Yes. Oh, OK. Get off. <laughs> this man is guilty. I mean, God, do for mine. <laughs> my guy. What? Involved, my client yeah. was trapped in a box yeah. and couldn't get out. <laughs> then a large wind blew <laughs> and he was forced backward. Did he steal the suitcase? He couldn't move. He was so <laughs> happy. <laughs> yeah, it's only, it doesn't even apply. It's only uh, people from outside the EU, anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but footballers are exempt. Footballers are exempt. The only language yeah. they've got, isn't it? They only need two sentences. First of all, they need. Uh, at the end of the day, and then either sick as a parrot or over the moon. Dots on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the idea of a load of asylum seekers in a van just going I before E except off the sea. I before E. <laughs> Do it. Well, we also it. deport the dyslexic people. Yeah, go abroad and get a jib. <laughs> Politicians all now have to pretend not to be racist, yeah, despite yeah. the fact that they're all quite happy to be racist if they think it will get them votes. You know, so you see, like, Tories pretending not to be racist. It's, it's terrible, the controls they're putting on Eastern European immigration. Don't people know that these are the last prostitutes in the world that you can pay in turnips? <laughs> <laughs> not that I want to stereotype those people, because they can put a curse on you. <laughs> to be English educated to GCSE standard? Yeah, yeah. Yes. If, I'm, if, I, if someone's given me a hand job, do I really care if they've read Death of a Salesman? <laughs> yeah. In fact, it'll probably just make it more depressing. <laughs> funny, immigrants are becoming more racist now, because my mum is from Nigeria, and she's becoming as racist as the BNP. She's quite right-wing. She's like, oh, all these Polish people and all these Kosovans coming over here, taking our job. <laughs> I'm like, mum, you're an immigrant. Oh, no, not anymore. I have a British passport. <laughs> Now we play a round called Don't Put Your Nuts on the Road. <laughs> this game involves Ed, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performer's stand-up skills. We spin <laughs> a news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner of the team I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go, let's spin the wheel. The first subject is homelessness. What's the going that? Ross. I had a really great incident with the homeless bloke the other day. That sounds fairly dodgy. Um, it was really, up, it's weirdly uplifting. So I, I gave him a pound and I was kind of walking away and he went, Oh, mate, I've got a magic dog. Now that is a sentence that buys you half an hour with me, right? <laughs> and he had sickle down him. It's dog, right? And the homeless bloke had sick down him as well. And I was like, what happened? And he went, oh, we was asleep in a skip and some bloke chucked up on us. It's the most depressing thing you've ever heard. And he just looked at me and went, no, it was amazing. <laughs> Really? Why is that? And apparently what he did, still covered in sick, he stood up in that skip and just went... <laughs> so this bloke was so drunk, he thought his vomit had come alive. <laughs> that man will never, ever drink again. Be it, Dave. It comes alive! It comes alive! <laughs> Lovely moment. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is taxis. Who wants to spin that? Ah. <clears throat> One thing I don't miss about London is uh, London cabbies. I used to live in Muswell Hill, a leafy suburb of London, about six miles north of here. That's what I thought when I bought the house. I got into a, a, a black cab in London's fashionable West End. Turned out, I lived in the arsehole of nowhere. Because <laughs> I'll get into a black cab and I'll go, Muswell Hill, please, and I'll get this. I go, no, mate, I'm not going that way. <laughs> like, he thinks it's a bus he's driving. <laughs> what do you mean you're not going that way? I'm not asking for a lift. You know, like, whenever I get this now, I just get in anyway. I go, all right, fair enough. Where do you want to go? <laughs> That spins them right out of that nose, doesn't it? You what? Come on, where do you want to go? I'm paying. <laughs> uh, no, mate, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Must as well help, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ed. OK, that leaves it with Frankie and Andy to spin the wheel. The next topic is transport. <laughs> I think the moral of that story is uh, never ride your horse on a runway. <laughs> You're, of course, not supposed to take planes anymore. Not a problem for me. The thing that always mucks me up, that little monitor that you get, you know, outside air temperature, minus 56 degrees. I am inside the aircraft. I have no intention of going outside the aircraft. And if I ever did find myself outside the aircraft, my initial response would not be, ooh, bit nippy. Well done, Andy. 
Okay, let's see what's been left for Frankie. Let's spin the wheel. Uh, it's Celebrity. Where you go. It was uh, the anniversary of Elvis's death recently. People still think that Elvis faked his death. Surely if you were going to fake your death, you wouldn't do it in a shitting accident. <laughs> You'd do something brave, wouldn't you? Rescue a wee boy from a river. Surely not a jobby related heart attack. <laughs> With the anniversary of uh, Princess Diana's death, I thought that at the concert, only Ricky Gervais played, paid a, a true tribute to Diana by dying a painful and horrible death. <laughs> you can get, you don't get celebrity sat navs now. You can get a Princess Diana sat nav. It just keeps saying, put your foot down, I think we can lose them. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, that joke can go either way. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you are. OK, the end of that round, I'm going to point to Russell and Andy. OK, now it's time for, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Gina, which category would you like? I think I'll go for health. Health, it is. The answer is Middlesbrough, Rill and Liverpool. What is the question? Um, in which three towns... Are you considered a lesbian if you're over 14 and haven't got six kids? <laughs> Where are the three largest Lidls in the country? <laughs> Can you name three places that Ryanair claim are just outside Dubrovnik? <laughs> what, my car's been stolen and cut into three pieces. Where is it? <laughs> is it what now constitutes a world tour for Jim Davidson? <laughs> Three places did the British Health Board name as the axis of chips? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what are the first three chapters of the book, Places Not to Grow Up Gay? <laughs> <laughs> what a Christmas present that would be. <laughs> what are you trying to say here, Dad? <laughs> Is it what can you buy for 50 nectar points? <laughs> It's to, do with, it's to do with life expectancy, though. It, it is to do with life expectancy, three yes. Three of the lowest in the bottom ten for life expectancy. That's absolutely right. Well done, Ed. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> However, I will qualify this as what's known as a healthy life expectancy, the age of which serious illness strikes. The question I'm looking for is, areas of, which, areas of which towns have the lowest expectancy of a healthy life? Figures compiled by the Office for National Statistics have shown that people living in the unhealthiest areas of England and Wales can expect to contract serious illness up to 30 years earlier than their counterparts in healthier areas. Anyone who's been to Middlesbrough will know that 11 to 53 is maybe a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> it's, sort of, it's sort of like Blade Runner without the special effects. <laughs> We can say what we like about them because they don't watch TV. They're all outside naked fighting. <laughs> but also, surely, if in some areas of town you live 30 years less long than other areas of town, yeah. aren't you just important to move? Yeah, yeah. Get to 52, go sod it. Maybe I'll buy a cottage where the life expectancy is a little bit well, longer. suddenly you're going to shoot up if you just move down the street yeah. so and apparently, apparently 30 years. <laughs> Japan, it? apparently they live till 91 in Japan, so when we get to 80, we should all go, right, off to Japan, another 11 years. <laughs> If I in one of those towns, I'd be delighted to die. <laughs> oh, there's a sniper on top of the town hall. Great, let's get down there. <laughs> Liverpool, they can take a joke. They love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they were rolling in the aisles when I pointed out that they called their airport John Lennon Airport because it's the first place he went when he earned a bit of cash. <laughs> yeah. They love that one, I tell you. <laughs> hey, I like Liverpool. Big theatres. Uh, <laughs> Didcot, apparently, your, your healthy life expectancy in Didcot, I have the top ten here, is 86 years. Didcot is only famous because it's got a giant power plant in the middle of it. It's yeah. a huge power plant. So these people are mutants. These are probably <laughs> held up as like, some example to the rest of us. Like, they can't be killed. <laughs> it's a story. Every so often, this same story comes up that up north, apparently, that all they eat is pies. It's just horrific. But then you think about it. If all they're going to do is eat pies and that, we should genetically modify pies and give them legs. And that way, you know, we can have the pies dance. Go, oi, fatty, you want to eat me, don't you? <laughs> you can catch me first. And just have a little fruit and a veg and healthy food just led there, and the pies leg in it. Genetically By modify way, Darren, a pie. Darren, yeah. Pies don't, they're not like born of a, of a large mother pie. Uh, <laughs> that, that pops them out from a pie womb. Not, and then they, you know, they're not actually individual living creatures. We can, what I'm saying, we can make it happen. Well, you know, Darren's <laughs> right. There are definitely holes in your get pies to grow legs theory. <laughs> so all you have to do is not kill the cow. Cover it in pastry, it can run on its own. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why it avoid, avoid the killing? <laughs> it would be quite a large pie. Think of the horror if a pie with human hands turned bad. 
Can you imagine not being throttled to death by a pie? <laughs> in fairness, how, how, ironic, in fairness, how ironic a death that would be to I'm be killed that. literally by a pie. Uh, <laughs> you knew I would get you eventually, says the pie who also has a mouth. Uh, but... Would you give legs to a fish pie, or would that be just two against nature? Would it, would it, have, to, would it have to be fins to a fish pie? To be honest, I, I come up with the idea, then I just kick back and play golf. Nuts on the road. What I do... <laughs> I say, I just walk into a factory and declare at them, I want legs on pies! And then I walk out. How? You go, don't give me how. I'm not the how guy. I pay you to be the how guy. (laughs) I just get the idea. You fill in the details. (laughs) Quack. I can't believe that Glasgow hasn't appeared on this table. It's, it's, this we're table, doing everything right. This table is for England and Wales. You ah. have your own, much like football, you have your own league <laughs> of, a much lower, of a much lower level anyway. <laughs> you're basically in a health dungeon. <laughs> you would screw with the figures so yeah. much. Yeah. 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 We can actually improve our life expectancy by introducing crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> the crocodiles. At least that's exercise. Uh, Do you not just carry a guard pie around with you that would attack people? <laughs> Mr Dennis, welcome to the executive board. He's thinking out loud. A guard pie. Yeah, a guard of course, pie. that's no. the next plan. He's moving up the corporate ladder really yeah. quickly. Isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> OK, oh, I almost dread uh, asking the next question. What have science has been given the go-ahead to create this week? Monkey <laughs> Porno pies. Porno pies. Oh they my. turn up to do your plumbing, they open up with a steak inside your fuck it. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> what the pornos are you watching? <laughs> Some steak, yeah. Well, oh, that's got me up the runway. I'm, try- I'm trying to get on your corporate ladder, you're racist. <laughs> What can I say to that? I've never (laughs) seen the race card fold so beautifully. (laughs) (laughs) That was a a, a pair of ace race cards. I got bullets. (laughs) You're not going to let me have sex with a steak, is it? Because I'm black. (laughs) Well, Well, that is beautifully a woman just shatter the glass ceiling. Shatter shat on the glass ceiling. Shatter. Shatter. <laughs> they they, they shat on the glass coffee table. They shatter the glass ceiling. <laughs> what <laughs> what what's happening? happening? <laughs> Darling, what's happening on the glass ceiling? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Gina up there? <laughs> Fuck off, you racist! Yeah. What she's she shatting onto the glass ceiling? <laughs> it seems to be a pie with hands. <laughs> She's actually crapping out the words racist. <laughs> it's incredible, ain't you? In steak chunks. They're going to make. <laughs> what have scientists been given? I'll ask the question again. What have scientists been given the go ahead to create this week? Monkey <laughs> butlers. Not monkey butlers. <laughs> it's close, though. It's, they've yeah. been given the go ahead to create human animal hybrids. Yes, they have, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And the scientists are very excited because they've already had tremendous success with Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, all right, he's injured. <laughs> He's injured at the minute, but the boy's got spirit. He's prowling the touchline like a caged potato. <laughs> <laughs> One of the quotes from a Newcastle, the Lyle Armstrong of Newcastle University um, oh, said this, make... just to reassure people, it's not our intention to create any bizarre cow-human hybrid. Why not? <laughs> because we already have, but never felt. <laughs> a failure of imagination on behalf of Newcastle University. Not that's, that's almost the first thing I'd want to do. Oh, sorry, how, how you doing, Mick? Moo. All right, moo to you as well. But they're talking about breeding pigs that can have hearts that they can then they transplant are. into yeah. people. Now, there's an interesting dilemma for people like, who consider pigs unclean. Pigs orgasm lasts for half an hour. It does. And I got told that at a restaurant in Melbourne. It was really weird. They like, hand out trivia. They don't go, there you go, mate, there's your burger. By the way, pigs orgasm lasts for half an hour. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> Captain Creepy. Jeez. I reckon the first person that found that out was like a... a Rebecca per- Luce. No, a pervert, yeah. <laughs> but in fairness, if you're a pervert farmer, how awkward would that be? You know, you've just had gentle sex with a pig and then for the next half an hour, oh, sharp rose, you're going to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> You'd also you'd want to time something... that properly if there was football on later as well, wouldn't you? Mm. Do you know, what, Do you know what, I never thought you'd say that to me. Well, well the... just you leaning over. If you're going to have sex with a pig, plan ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? There'll be someone sitting at home right now who's heard that pigs come for half an hour. who will be going, that one I shagged was faking. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a female pig that comes for half an hour? I don't know. The male pig would turn itself inside it's out. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Let's move really swiftly. I guess we're going to be getting, getting pages on pages on MySpace. Sorry, did I just go too far? Did yeah, I tiny yeah, bit? Yeah. My what you could have is a separate pie full of semen. All oh, right. <laughs> This is... No, 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 no. Off the board. <laughs> Shat on the glass ceiling was fine. Uh, anyway. You're Hugh Punt from Punt and Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting here talking about a pie full of pig semen. <laughs> 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 Again, that round, points go to Russell, Gene and Andy. Yay! <laughs> 
Now we come to our final quick fire round call. Scenes we'd like to see. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. I call ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions, okay? Here we go. <laughs> the first subject is what a news reporter would never say. Next on News 24, I'm going to punch a zebra. <laughs> Who cares? No one's watching. <laughs> Rape, murder, arson. I've had a fantastic weekend. <laughs> Here, children as young as eight are forced to earn their own living. More polish, more polish, I want to see my face! Here on the streets, it seems that Britain is completely in the grip of gang culture. This is John Simpson for the ITN Massive! (laughs) Can you hear the bombs falling? No? That's because they're in Baghdad. I'm here in Peckham. Reports of a mystery man loitering in the area turned out to be me. (laughs) News just then. Go to a break. Your wife's been hit by a truck. (laughs) And it was just a few feet from here that the shots were fired. I know, I fired them. Well, finally, the power in Beirut seems to be back on. The radiator I'm chained to is getting quite warm. (laughs) Even amidst the devastation of this earthquake, there are still stories of hope. I found a man's wallet. (laughs) I am actually in my bedroom, but I'm trying to make it look like I'm in Baghdad on a satellite phone. (laughs) And I can't help thinking that if my country was gripped by famine, I'd just move. (laughs) They wouldn't make Trevor MacDonald do this shit. (laughs) And if anything can be learned from this high school massacre, it's surely this. Don't mess with goths. They're fucking mental. (laughs) The next topic is unlikely letters to be read out on points of view. Dear BBC, last night I was watching Songs of Praise. Masturbating furiously as usual. <laughs> Dear points of view, can I complain about the gratuitous fucking swearing every fucking week on Mark the Fucking Week? <laughs> Dear BBC, I watched a light entertainment programme on your network the other night that wasn't hosted by Graham Norton. Is he ill? <laughs> Dear BBC, how did you manage to get those hippos to swim in a circle? <laughs> Dear BBC, I am a Nigerian general with £30 million to put in your bank account. Last night, I turned on to your new porn channel, Sea Boobies. Dear points of your, I would like to complain about the weird voice you're reading out my letter in. <laughs> Dear point of view, has anyone else noticed that Pat Butcher looks a lot like the honey monster from the Sugar Puff family? <laughs> Dear BBC, when are you going to show Nuts on the Road? <laughs> nim, nim, nim. <laughs> Dear point of view, I watched Silent Witness with the sound off and it didn't make any sense. <laughs> Dear BBC, well, it's now 30 years down the line and I'm no closer to owning a robotic housemaid. Tomorrow's world, tomorrow's horseshit, more like. (laughs) Dear points of view, watching Queer Eye for the Straight Guy made me think that if I made gay friends, they'd give me fashion tips. Actually, they fucked me. BBC, are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> Dear BBC, please bring back the old idents. Yours, that black bloke in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> the other night, I watched Nigella Lawson and picked up a couple of good tips on baking bread. And in the process, I just about ripped my cock off. <laughs> 
Okay, point in that round. Got a Russell, Gina, and Andy. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Jeannie Ashray, and Russell Howard. For commiserations to Frankie Boy and Hugh Dennis and Ed Byrne. Thank you for watching. I'm Darby. Good night.